kind of hang out and wait for everybody else to log in. And wait for Nancy, of course. <laughs> yeah, I don't have a, I don't, I still haven't figured out how to put a timer on it. Oh, I don't really think there is a way. There is a way. Yeah. Only I'm not All right. to do it yet. I'm going to have to move back a little bit in order to get the board and jack. Okay. You said it was fine. I thought it was. Yeah. Your mother doesn't know. Well, no, because what shows up on there doesn't necessarily show up on the screen. Mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> All right. We got folks checking in. Great. Whoever's checking in, thanks for... Chiming in and joining us on the birthday edition, the John Notabartolo birthday edition of Quarantine Kitchen. Not this John Notabartolo, that John Notabartolo. <laughs> Though um, Lisa and I are celebrating our one year anniversary today. That's nice. That's good. <laughs> Lisa's with us today behind the scenes with Mr. John. You're just gonna have to let me know when we've got about 20 people in, and then we'll start. Well, we're up to nine. Okay, is Aunt Nancy there yet? No, Walt is though. Hi, Wally. <laughs> hey, hold on. I had to do a Wally for the camera. Good. We're going to start on time at 3 o'clock, and hopefully my sister will be there, which is 6 o'clock on the East Coast. Good Lord. <laughs> I don't even know how I see out of here. You can't talk to the camera, Jack. Huh? Go ahead and talk. No. <laughs> I mean, you can't see. You can barely hear. What's the matter with you? <laughs> Yes, uh, here on here on this edition of Quarantine Kitchen, there is going to be a lot of mom and I poking fun at each other back and forth because honestly, whenever we work to, in the kitchen together, that's just what we do. Um, expect to hear a lot of hollering, so you may want to turn your volume down yeah, at some point. You're not being hollering unless no. it acts up. This is me we're talking about. Love you. You have three minutes and you're at 20. Great. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Um... So my darling husband is 56 today. We have been married and together longer than we were single, <laughs> which is a long time. We're, we've been married 33 years. This is our only child, our only son, Jack. Hi. Um, he will be 27. I almost said 27. <laughs> He'll be 27 next month. And we'll do a quarantine kitchen for his birthday too, even though hopefully we will be out of quarantine by then. Um, so instead of Nancy choosing the recipe this week, we let John pick the recipe this week. So when you are commenting, John is gonna read me the questions, if there's a question. If you're just making a comment, know that any response you get that is in writing is gonna be from him. So you are welcome to wish him a happy birthday. You are welcome to call him old, because he is. Most, mostly just likes. That's what That's I'm working great. on. That's great. <laughs> likes and waves. Likes, likes and waves. waves. Tots, and, waves. Tots, and tots and pairs. Tots and pairs. And so, um, let me see what time is. Okay. We're going to wait until 3 precisely to give you all of the lowdown. All right, you're... Also, Down I think to a it's minute. really considerate that you put me on your left, so I'm not elbowing you. I know. Right. See how I was thinking about it? So my son is a lefty. So for those of you who are lefties, watch him. If you're a righty, watch me. Now, Jack has been in the kitchen with me since he was very small. He's always enjoyed cooking. Yeah, and small enough to barely look over the couch. Yeah, I had to put him on a chair so he could stand on it. Um, but he's always enjoyed cooking. So I asked him if he wanted to participate for his dad's birthday and he said yes. So we're gonna kind of do this together. We're gonna try not to go too fast because there'll be two of us doing it. So we'll be twice as fast as some of you. So I'd also like to point out that you're a lot more experienced with this dish than I am. Yes. So, so the thing is the issues that y'all were having where you were telling her, hey, slow down, I'm not at that part yet. 
she's going to have to wait for me anyway, so you'll be yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. So we are at 3 o'clock, so what I want to tell you, and for those of you who have never joined us before, this is a real house, this is my real kitchen, and we have real dogs who may or may not bark at any given time if a delivery comes, if somebody walks by in front of the house. So I apologize in advance if the dogs start barking. Um, oh, I forgot to pull the chicken breasts out. So we're going to be doing today a chicken piccata, which is, you know, where, we, where John and I grew up, this is like a classic red sauce, Italian joint recipe that everybody thinks is super complicated, but it's really easy. And once you know how to make it yourself, this is one of those things you'll never order again in public. And then you'll find something else to try on the menu at, a, at an Italian restaurant. So like when I go out to eat Italian, you will never see me, I, I almost never go out to eat Italian because I cook a lot of Italian at home. But when I do, I order things that I don't make at home, like salt and boca, also buco, like fresh made pasta, like, they, like James Trees does. He does the best cacio e pepe, which is ridiculous. So I order things that I can't make or I don't make at home. This is one of the things that I make at home, so I almost never order it. This is my version of it. This is not Vic, necessarily classic version. Vic wants to know if there's a vegan version of it. Oh, vegan schnegan. If you want to do a meat substitute that is a chicken-ish or veal-ish. Jackfruit. No, you can't. It, no, it doesn't work. If you get one of those patties, you can do it with that. But this is really not. So Lisa, Jack's girlfriend, is a vegetarian. So I've got red sauce on the stove for her. So we'll be separating out some pasta for her so that she can enjoy dinner with us. Um, but this recipe is super simple. It's pretty inexpensive. Like the most expensive thing you've got is the chicken and the capers. And the capers are probably more than the chicken. Capers? Capers. Yes. So um, we're gonna give you some tips to save you money, um, some tips on what to do with your stuff. And John, is Nancy there? Yes. Okay, great. All right. So. Uh, Jack, I want you to... Somebody stay in the shop, please. Sorry, oh. I'm shooting my <laughs> Okay, so, um, I want you to cover your board with a piece of saran wrap. Yep. No, you're blocked. No, no, no you're no, I have everything out. Okay, so, the first thing I want to tell you about chicken is, I got this piece of advice from Chef Jill Mora when I was in school. And she said, treat chicken like it is radioactive. There's an awful lot of bacteria when it comes to chicken. So you'll notice we are using plastic boards that can be bleached and sanitized and thrown in the dishwasher. We are not using a wooden board. That's why I told you I have two cutting boards. One of them should be plastic. And if you think that medium rare chicken strips are a thing, then you should be reverting yeah. to the gene. So. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So. Here's your chicken breast. Would you put a piece of plastic on mine too? Yep. You gotta treat your chicken like it has the coronavirus. <laughs> yeah, all right. Wear a mask. Okay, here's my chicken breast. All right. When you get your chicken breast, sometimes, you see these ones are really big. So sometimes it will have the chicken tender attached to it. I want you to take that off. And you'll see looking at this, I've still got a little bit of um, uh, fascia and a little bit of uh, cartilage there. So we, um, I need it here, I'll use this one. Um, Cause I can throw this in the washing machine later. Okay, so we're going to just take our knife and get in there and just cut that little bit of fascia out. Put it right in here. Just a second. If you take a little extra meat off, it's fine. Okay, good. Good. Okay, so now I want you to flip your chicken breast over so that the pretty side is up. So the pretty side is actually the outside of the chicken breast. This is the part that touches the ribs. So you want the part that the skin touches to be up. And you want to turn it so that the skinny side of the breast 
is facing away from your knife. So in my case, it's gonna face to the left. In Jack's case, it's gonna face to the right. You know, you're gonna put your tail down here. All right, well. Oh yeah. Right, okay. Yeah, you've got the right one. Okay, so take your hand, curve your fingers up, tuck your thumb in, put it down on top of the chicken. Turn your knife to face the chicken, and you're gonna go in halfway, and you're gonna make a nice smooth cut from top to bottom. So you're gonna be cutting your chicken breast in half crosswise. Now, let me see how you do it. Okay, good. Stick your thumb in there and pull it back a little bit. Good. Now continue. And go all the way to the end. And so when you're starting to peel it open, great. So it should look kind of like a butterfly or a heart. Yeah, good job. I'm gonna hit mine a little bit more. And you're just gonna kinda push it down. Oh, that looks great, Jack, good job. Okay, now we're gonna wash our hands <laughs> because we have to touch that again. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, wash your hands. All right. So remember, anytime you touch the chicken, Soap and water. You're washing your hands, soap and water. Wash your and hands like you're supposed to be doing. Yeah, like you're supposed to be doing. Um, and what we're going to end up doing is putting another piece of um, saran wrap, plastic wrap, on top and pounding it thin. Now, I personally like to take mine and flip it over so that the pretty side is up. You can do yours any way you like. Jack, now that your hands are clean, would you put saran wrap over the top of both of our chickens? Yep. Now the reason for the saran wrap is that you're going, you're going to be touching it um, with um, a meat mallet or a rolling pin, and we want to make sure we're not cross-contaminating our food. Because remember, chicken is radioactive. Waking up to ash and dust, I wipe my brow, I sweat my breast. Okay, here, let me have that. Now we're done with it. Great. All right, so you got a little bit of different view this time because we were going to be working side by side. We wanted to be able to show you both of us. <clears throat> and my mother said she wanted me to face the camera, so my mom should be really pleased. Okay. So, there's a couple of different things you could do. This is a meat mallet, and I'm gonna try and hold it close. You see those um, spoky, pokey things? You don't wanna use them, you wanna use the flap side. If this is the kind of meat mallet you're using, you're gonna to wanna to use the flap side of the meat mallet. If you're using this kind of meat mallet, you want the flap surface, and if you're using a rolling pin, just use a rolling pin. Which one do you want? I'll take the You're gonna take that one? Yeah. Okay, this so. This is the one I have at home, so. Okay, so, when you're And if you this, don't have any, you can use a can. Yeah, you can use a can, the side of a can, not the bottom, because then the bottom's gonna do some weird shit to you. Just don't chicken. use a soda can. Yeah, no. So what you wanna do is the thickest part of the flesh, and here you are, right? Yes. You're gonna... And you're gonna kinda wanna do it at an angle. Oh. Okay. Chicken's getting away from me. Okay. So what you're doing here is two things. You are tenderizing the chicken because by beating it, you're breaking up the muscle fibers, which is gonna allow it to cook a lot faster. And if you need to stop like I am and re you know reorganize your saran wrap, go for it. And you're not you're not slamming it, you're just gently beating it into submission. Firmly grasp it. Now, if you're using one of these, the trick is that you want to hit it and kind of push outwards. Good job, exactly. Oh, it's almost like I know what I'm doing. Almost like I know what you're doing. So you can use this same technique to do chicken parmesan or chicken marsala. Some chicken of our... Front, chicken out of sight. And you see how big that is. So, now. 
Apparently, some of our folks who are on mobile phones are having a hard time seeing the countertop. Okay. So I angled down a little That's bit. That's fine. That's fine. All right, let me see. Channel your inner Italian grandmother for using rolling <laughs> And see how big these have gotten? So when you're in the grocery store and you see chicken cutlets, uh, don't waste your money. They cost like twice as much or three times as much as a regular chicken breast. Guess what I just taught you how to make? Congratulations, you just made chicken cutlets. Okay? And my sister Nancy, she learned a different way to make chicken cutlets, which was not from me. And that's fine too. But this is the way I do it. This is a huge one. Alright. So now we're going to take our top layer of saran off. And toss it in the bin. And then we're going to take our knife. And we're going to cut it down the middle again to give us two pieces. Notice how Jack put his saran wrap over the top so he could do it. Good. All right. Good job. All right. So now I told you to have a cup of uh, flour divided. And I am going to show you, I'm going to pull all of our other tools over here. So now, those of you that are working on electric stoves, even those of you that are working on gas stoves, I want you to fill your stock pot with, I said an eight quart stock pot, I want you to fill it with about six quarts of water, which is about two thirds of the weight uh, up. And I want you to turn it on. Now, I'm using a, um, an induction burner today. For you scientists at home, you should have one in your house. <laughs> uh, but this is one of the ones that I used to take with me when I did live demos. So I, you know, could plug it in anywhere. And then what I'm going to actually put the chicken on is a portable gas burner. So here are our tools and ingredients. Okay. Might it make sense to put those in between the two of They're you? They're going to be. Okay. Okay, so the second thing I want you to do is I want you to put your oven or your toaster oven, we're going to use a toaster oven today, on warm because once this right. chicken comes out, we're going to put it in the oven to keep it warm. Some folks want to know how thin. You know what? Mine is about a quarter of an inch thin, maybe a little bit more. You don't want to be able to see through it. You don't want holes in it. Uh, you want it to be uniformly even, and it's going to cook faster when it's pounded out. It's going to be more tender, and if you if it's thick, it just takes a long time to cook all the way through, which is why we made the cutlets. So I'm going to put this on warm so that we can get it ready. Oh, that actually works. Look at that. Fancy, huh? The one that you gave me doesn't. Hold on me. Okay. Make toast. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about your capers for a minute. Capers are the bud, a, a closed flower bud of a specific type of bush. Talking about flower buds in this month, 420, where are you 420, on about? Uh, we're in May now, Bob. Oh, oh. crap. So um, <laughs> they're typically stored in a liquid brine, a salt, <laughs> a salt brine. Uh, sometimes you'll find them packed um, in salt. How hot to warm the oven? Uh, 200, or if it has a warm cycle, put it on warm. And my toaster oven's on warm. But if I was using a regular oven, I'd do it at 200. And okay. how much water? Uh, about six quarts. Okay. Okay, so the capers are stored in brine, which is why I told you to rinse them. Because they're salty enough on their own, and the brine actually makes them saltier. And what we're going to do is dry them out. So, um, anyway. Ooh. 
All right, so this is my little mini gas burner, and hopefully, ah, here it goes. Okay. Take this small skillet that I asked you to have, and you want to heat it up, and it should be dry. No oil, no butter, nothing in it. You're just going to have a dry skillet, okay? Once it gets warm, it doesn't have to be hot yet, but once it gets warm, I want you to throw your... I want you to throw your capers in, and I want you to dry them out. Now, you're going to do two things by doing this. One, you're going to remove excess moisture, and you're going to change the texture of the capers slightly, and you're also going to allow those little flower buds to open up just a little bit. Okay? And it's going to look like salt water has dried on the bottom of your pan. That's fine. Don't panic, it'll wash right out. And if you hear a little bit of a popping noise, that's because that's the sound of the buds opening. That's up. right. Now, like It's like popcorn, but much, much quieter. Yep, like much quieter. Good job. Okay, so I am gonna get the flour for us while that's going on. Well, another thing that capers are really good for is if you guys wanna make a plate of pasta puttanesca, which is another low budget, like you should have a lot of the stuff in your kitchen kind of thing. Um, it's one of those, it, it adds that extra layer of saltiness to the dish. Uh, and the trick of, and the trick about it for pasta puttanesca is that you use anchovies in your oil. <laughs> See, I taught him something. You taught me a few things, I just don't remember it all the time. <laughs> okay, so you see how the bottom of my pan is looking like salt water, ocean, you know, that's fine. That's what the ocean looks like? Well, when it dries out. Yeah. I mean, it's been so many years. And you want these, you're going to notice they're going to change. Um, you want them to be dry. Somebody wants to know if a Teflon skillet is okay. Not um, yeah, skillet. you could do it in a Teflon skillet. I, I don't see why not. I've never tried it, but I don't see why you wouldn't be able to. And you could, you know, Jack, you're right. It does sound like popcorn, a lot softer. Yeah. And you'll notice they're start, they open up just a little bit. So what you're doing is you're cooking off some of the brine, you're drying them out to improve their texture. And you're getting that smell. And it smells great, yeah. And when they look dry and they start to move, oh, I wish you could see this. They start popping around like Mexican jumping beans. The minute you take them off the fire, they stop. They start popping around like Mexican jumping beans. You're almost there. Like um, Monty wants to know how much flour in the pan. Uh, I said you were going to have a cup divided, so put most of your cup in here. I want you to reserve a couple of tablespoons just in case you need to thicken the sauce. Okay? All right, so we're going to shut that off, and we're going to just set these aside. We're going to add them to the dish later. Okay, so we've got our chicken breasts. And we've got our flour. I'm gonna have you turn your cutting board that way, and I'm gonna turn my cutting board this way, and I'm gonna move this back here for now. Okay, so remember how I talk about the salt? It's always about the salt, okay? Yes. And we're not gonna salt bay this shit, don't worry about it. But we're gonna season our chicken front and back with some kosher salt. And you're gonna use three fingers and your thumb. Okay? And then flip your breasts over. Oh, I didn't cut all the way through mine. <laughs> I was trying not to cut the plastic. Well, I cut through the plastic, so. Right. And fucker, I'm gonna have to handle this. I know, me too. Go wash your hands. <laughs> you know what? You should be doing that too. I'm going to, but I didn't touch the chicken the last time. Jeez. <laughs> Talking about needing to wash okay. our hands so or keep our elders safe. Your hands should be washed like every time you touch raw chicken. Because it's a bacteria farm. And we've all been learning a lot about cross contamination. Oh yes. Well, 
And the thing is that if you guys ever get brave enough that you want to brine a chicken, make sure that you dump, make sure that you are very controlled when you dump that stuff out. Because that brine, after the chicken's been in it, it's what we call salmonella cocktail. That's correct. So, yeah, now you can season the other half. And the, the higher up you are from the chicken, the more even the disbursement's going to be. So don't go too close. You want to be up here. And if you get it on your counter, so what? It's just salt. It'll wash up. And we're going to add, again, these three fingers plus your thumb of salt twice in there into the flour. And we're going to add some freshly ground black pepper. If you can't grind it your own, store bought is fine. That's true. Yes, I'm going full bear for Contessa on them. <laughs> Don't you love that my kid watches bear for Contessa? No, I just know the jokes. Okay, and then we're just going to kind of whisk this together. You don't have to use a fancy whisk, a fork works. Yeah, a fork will work. But we just kind of want to evenly distribute. Our seasons. salt into the flour. Shake it out. You know, I'm just using a sheet pan. If you're using a plate, that's fine. If you're using a, a shallow dish of some sort, that's fine. I'm going to move this over here. Put that in the sink, please. Yep. Okay. Now. <clears throat> so something that something that you'll learn about how she's presenting this is that she did not always present food this way. Mom worked for how many years, 15 years, as a sales consultant with Pampered Chef, which Sorry. meant that she was focusing more on the product than on the food. Yeah. Since I moved out on my own, I have, had to, I have learned to make do with all, all the turnip cloggers <laughs> that she has on hand. Okay, so now we're gonna put our stainless pan, our big pan that I told you to have, we're gonna put it on moderate heat. If you are using an electric stove, now is the time to get it going. And you know what I'm going to do, Jack? What are you going to do? I'm going to get an extra set of tongs out. And I'm going to have you move those breasts all onto the same cutting board so people could see what we're doing when we dredge. Okay. So into, I need to have a knife, into our skillet. We're going to add two tablespoons of butter. More you can feel it might be in the way, Mom. And we're going to add roughly two tablespoons of olive oil. Now, the reason, well, that's probably three. <laughs> the reason we want them together is butter has a very low smoke point and it will start to burn before it gets hot enough to cook the chicken in, but we want that really good buttery flavor. And olive oil is gonna help balance it out, okay? And we wanna make sure that the whole bottom of the pan is covered. Okay, so Jack, yes. pick up breast number one. Breast number one. Now, I was just about to say keep one hand dry. <laughs> okay, you, you did breast specify. number one goes into the flour. Use the tongs to flip it over. You wanna do this, shake. If you like Taylor Swift, shake it off. Pick it up, flip it over, shake it again. So all of the nooks and crannies of the chicken breast should be covered. See? There. Is that better? It's fine. Uh, all, the all the nooks and crannies should be covered. You don't want a great big thick gloppy layer of flour. You're just going to have a nice light layer. And you'll see how my butter is foamy and it's mixing well with the olive oil. That means it's time. Okay, so I'm going to use my dry hand. You're going to pick it up. Make sure all of your parts are covered. And you're going to lay it right into that fat. Mom, generally speaking, if and you're on camera, hear, your parts should be covered. And you'll hear a little bit of sizzle. Breast number two. Breast number two. Okay, and you're gonna do the same thing. Now, the reason I told you to have the oven ready is because we pounded these out. Only two of them are gonna fit in the pan at the same time, okay? And 
I'll use my dry hands because we have the wet hands. You're still touching the chicken. I know I'm still touching the chicken, but that's okay. But see, this one, I think I pounded it too thin. It's okay. You'll cook the same. Now, you don't want to do all four into the pan at the same time unless yours are really small because then they'll start yeah. to steam instead of actually um, brown. I and mean, we want them to brown. And your sister Nancy is still melting butter. That's okay. See, I'm being responsible with my chicken hands. <laughs> That's And no, they don't see because you're off camera. They can hear him washing. <laughs> it's like, oh yes, we're we need to we need to wash our hands and make sure we're staying safe for our elders. I'm washing my hands, my elder. Well, <coughs> well, she's still working. She's still in the chicken. Nancy? No, you are. Oh yeah, absolutely. Jesus. <laughs> Okay, so while we're waiting for our chicken to cook, I'm just going to take a couple questions. Who's got a question? How's everybody keeping up? Is everybody keeping up? Mom, there's a delay. I know there's a delay. Why are you not there is it? Okay. I'm being respectfully silent. This is your show. Since when has that ever happened? <laughs> Listen, I'm only disrespectfully loud when it's funny. Are your, are your hands are clean now? Yes, okay. they are. Pull the trash off. Thank you. Thank you. And nobody's coming up with any no questions. No questions. Great. How many people are watching, babe? Uh, we have 36. Great. So. So you're waiting for your chicken to get the gorgeous golden brown. Which I think we are approaching right now. And we should be approaching it. Just tilt it. Okay. And you're going to yeah. notice that your breast is going to start to shrink up a little bit. Because remember? And it's going to tighten up. And then um, you want to make sure it's centered on the burner so that the heat is distributed evenly. Nancy's butter is not sizzling. Well, did you put the olive oil in with it? Because that's what helps to do it. <laughs> yes, your chicken breast will be shrinking because if you remember things from science class, animals are about 70% water, chickens and humans alike. So the more of that more of that moisture cooks off, the more it's going to shrink. Physics. <laughs> Biology. Physics too. Because the water turns into black. Steam. Water vapor. That's my extra thing with Tom. Oh, did it. Tracy says she can't see Bob. Tracy. Bradley. Okay. Well, this is just the cooking time now. So we've got time to answer questions. We're just going to let this sit here and get golden brown. If, if this is, you know, like my friend LeBeth said, you can't rush the stove. I can rush the technique all day. Wait. You can't rush the stove. So here's a question. If this, let's say cookie recipe that I want to make mm -hmm. it says to bake it for 20 minutes at 350. Could I potentially shorten it down to 10 minutes by baking it 700? No. <laughs> what if, what if I shorten it? I it burns on the outside and one minute. What if I, what if I shorten it down to two minutes and 7,000? Yeah, stop. You'll just end up making ash. So. Okay, so when you look, if you look at this, you'll see how it's starting to get brown around the edges and it still looks raw in the middle. This is when we flip it. Shelly wanted to know when do you put the pasta on? Not yet. Don't worry, I'll tell you. Well, how long is it going to take for the water to boil? Once, once the water. water's boiling, don't worry. Water takes longer to boil the more you wait for it. Yeah. 
Right, so, so make sure you've got your water going up to a boil. See how that is? Nice and brown? Okay. Yeah, so your, your pasta pot should be on. It should be almost ready to boil at this point. Mine is just now coming to a boil, but this induction burner is way hotter than an electric stove. Oh, so you can rush the stove. No, 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 I'm not rushing the stove. The burner is that hot. This is a 1400 degree burner. It, it, it's not me, it's the burner. So once your water comes to a boil. Nancy's finally sizzling. Great. Once your water comes to a boil, then we're going to um, put some salt in. Now let's talk about cooking pasta, okay? When your water, when your pasta is in the water, it is the only opportunity you have to season the pasta itself. Well, I mean, this is if you're using store-bought, if you're making it your own. Well, yeah, we're talking about dry pasta out of the box. So you want to put in as much salt as to make that water taste like the ocean. I do not want you to panic. I told you a half a cup of kosher salt. So you did all this, right? Now I want you to do this. I'm gonna make you do this. I put almost all of the rest of that into your water. Now, before you go jump in the gun, if you pour all of that salt all at once into boiling water, it's gonna go whoosh. It's going to boil over, it's going to get all over your stove. Take your time, gently work it yeah. in. I had that problem just the other night. I have it all the time because I rush the stove. Okay, so okay. our... Um, Somebody wanted to know if they were still cooking the capers. No, your capers should be off the heat. That was your timer. Okay. But now, a word from our sponsor. Nota Brow, a quarantine beverage. So now we're going to take our two cooked chicken breasts out. We're going to put them into our warm oven just to keep them warm. Now I'm doing it in a toaster oven. Um, if you're doing it in a regular oven, you should be putting it on that heat safe plate that I told you to have ready. And we're gonna add another two tablespoons of butter to the pan. And a little bit more olive oil. And we're gonna wait for it to do its thing. Now, on the bottom of the pan, you're gonna see that brown gorgeousness. That's called fond. Do well, not panic. We want that. And it likes you too, don't worry. <laughs> and Nancy says she's nowhere near taking this off. That's okay. This one's really big, so I'm gonna cook it by itself. In a sec, and I'll shake that down. Okay. And I want you to take that and that and stick it right in the dishwasher. Yeah. So yeah, you gotta kind of know your pan. Um, like I said, that one was really big, so we don't want to put two in at the same time and crowd the pan and have them start steaming. So What's we're the actually gonna cook the, these two separately because so. the breast that Jack started with was huge. So, Shelly uh, Mazella wanted to know if the chicken should be cooked all the way through. It should be cooked most of the way through. It's going to finish cooking in the sauce. But if you cooked it all the way through, that's fine. The sauce is going to keep it tender. You've pounded it out within an inch of its slate, so you've broken up all those muscle fibers. So it's going to be tender even if you slightly overcook it. So don't panic. This is one of those great recipes that it's like pretty much impossible to screw up. And yet, I would find a way to do it anyway. <laughs> and I, well, as soon as Jack's done, I yes. wash my hands, so at least one of us is in the picture at the same time. I am trying to be a responsible quarantine kid. I love that. 
Now, keep in mind that when you're cooking your chicken this way, it's going to be very different than the way that you would cook it if you're having, say, southern fried chicken. Oh, yeah. Or, um, it's, it, or even a chicken fried steak. For those of you guys that like going to a uh, breakfast place or a, you know, more uh, soul food kind of kitchen, you, you might order the chicken fried steak. It's made in a completely different way than the way that you're doing it, so don't think that just because, oh, hey, I pounded this meat flat and, and floured it on both sides that the same rules apply. They don't. It's not the same. Different kind of style. Different, different technique. Yep. And to top it all off, those two are not done with just like flour, salt, and pepper the way that we are doing it. They're more often done with the back. Sometimes. Depends on the place. Mm. I got flour all over the counter. I'm a messy cook. I'm lucky I'm not wearing it yet. No, that's for later. Yeah, probably. Okay. Because that one of the running jokes in our family is that she cannot go a meal without dropping something on her. Yeah, and it's usually on my boobs. Okay, Nancy, so like, Nancy wants to know if she drains the chicken. Just pick it up, put it on the plate, because you're going to take all the juices and everything from that and put it back into the pan later. But you're not trying to get it dark brown. You're just getting it a light golden brown like that. And it takes time. You just rest. We rest. So now we're going to um, start getting together our other tools while this is cooking. Because you don't have to watch it. Okay. So. I told you to have either a citrus juicer or a press. Or if you don't have those, just using a really strong grip is fine. Now a, or trick for, now, a trick for getting more juice out of a out of a citrus fruit like that, if you want to get more juice or if you're using your hands and you want to get as much as you can out of it, the trick doing it is take the fruit, put it in the microwave for a minute, and you'll get twice Mark as much out out of it. 10 seconds. Good idea. Long time. 10 seconds. One minute, it'll <laughs> explode. <laughs> well, yeah, it's it's nice. Okay. Did you get a pan out? What? The pan. You gotta have to use the towel. That's why I have my towel on. Great. You're not a hoopy fruit unless you know where your towel's at. <coughs> awesome. And then we're gonna do our last cutlet into the same pan. Whatever's left over from your flour that the raw chicken was in, Throw it out. You're never going to use it again. And if you try to use it, well, remember, you're, salmonella cocktail. You're inviting salmonella, that's correct. Okay. So I want to, and I don't know if she's watching, but I want to give a big thank you to my friend Leslie Albers, the retired Air Force Colonel Leslie Albers. Behind us, you will see all of these lemons. And if you follow me on Instagram and Facebook, you have seen this one next to a dollar bill. Yes, this is really it. It was not Photoshopped. It wasn't a filter. This is how big that lemon is. These are fresh off of her tree in here in Las Vegas. And they're all massive. Okay? Massive, massive, massive. So, Jack, I'm yes. going to have you... Um, now, I've washed all my lemons... Uh, because these were fresh off a tree here in Vegas. I didn't know Can if there was more, bird shit on them. So I wanted to make sure that they were um, properly washed. So when you're getting, when you need to use <coughs> the zest and the juice from a lemon, you want to zest it first. And I'm going to move your beer so people can see what you're doing. And remember what I said about uh, when we did the orange for the crepes? Remember, we don't want to get into the white. All we want is the colored part, and you're going to rotate your fruit as you go over that zester. Just a couple of grapes, move it. A couple of grapes, move it. A couple of grapes, move it. So while Jack's doing that, this is a reamer, okay? 
and it looks like a star on the end, you're going to stick it into the cut part of the fruit and hold the fruit on there and it's going to get all the juice out. This is a press, like a garlic press. You put your cut side of your fruit down in here, basically turns it inside out and pushes all the juice out. These lemons are too big for this, so we're going to use a juicer. Now this particular one has a, a catch underneath. Some actually have this part that sticks up inside a glass bowl. Hey mom, how many lemons should we zest? Just the one, because this is going to be plenty of flavor. Let me reach. Okay. Not by the hot stove, please. <laughs> All right, Kitchen gonna, safety first. I'm going to shut my burner down. And I'm going to transfer this last piece of chicken into the oven. And I'm going to kind of wait for you guys to catch up. And we're going to talk about lemons and citrus for a minute. So you see in the bottom of my pan, there's all of that, uh, the gorgeous brown bits called fond. We're gonna leave that. And if it turns black, I want you to dump it out. You should, this should be brown, not black. And I've got a little extra piece of chicken in here and I'm just gonna take it out. All right, so my water is boiling. So I am going to take and gradually add a lot of salt. Don't panic. There is no way this pasta is going to suck up all of that salt. But if you don't have the salt in the water, it's going to taste like crap. It's going to be so flat, boring, and bland. You're going to say, Leanne, what the hell? Now, Here's the other argument about cooking pasta. If you put oil in that pasta, I'm gonna smack the hell out of you. If you put oil in the pasta water, what's gonna happen is any sauce you put on the pasta is gonna slide right off. Leave it alone. Do not add oil to your pasta water, ever. Period, end of conversation. Because the starch on the outside of the pasta is actually gonna hold the sauce onto the pasta. Okay, so Jack, I want you to cut that lemon in half. Thank you. I'm gonna move your beer, see what you're doing. And I want you to juice. Juice, juice, juice. And you know, depending on what you're using, you wanna get about a half a cup of lemon juice. Roughly. That's why I said if you have the lemons are small, you're gonna need three. Um, these ones are really large, thank you again, Leslie. And we're gonna, here's another tip for getting juice out of a lemon. Take it and roll it. What it's gonna do is it's gonna start busting up the little juice sacks that are inside the citrus. <laughs> I said sack, I know. And it's gonna help it get more juicy. And it makes it easier to juice too. Yeah, it makes it easier to juice too. But always zest first, because if you're trying to zest these little half cut pieces, it's a pain in the butt. Please don't zest me. Yeah. Now your pasta is only gonna take about eight minutes to cook. 10, maybe, depending on, I like mine a little firm still in the middle. I don't want a piece of mush in my mouth. So we're gonna cook ours about nine minutes. And we're gonna drop that pasta when we start the sauce. Okay, you're in good shape here. How's everybody else doing? Well, let's find out. Survey says. Survey says. And Wait for everybody to chime in. Let me know. Is your chicken cooked? If your chicken is cooked and on your warming plate, you are in awesome shape. And we're going to start making our sauce. So I'm going to actually put my burner back on. Um, if you're still working on your chicken, that's great. 
because your pan's gonna be hot. So this is the optional ingredient I told you. I, you know, I make the shopping list and then I read it over, but everybody was asking me, what do I need to have, what do I need to have? And I posted it before I read it for the third time. I forgot to add this, this is optional. I like to add a little dry white wine to the dish. It, you don't have to, but if you have it, go ahead. You're gonna put, I don't know, a half a cup in, you show this, and deglaze that pan. Okay, so it looks like everybody was caught up with you, so. All right. So deglaze your pan with your wine. Get all that greasy goodness up. Get all the gorgeousness up off the butt. See how it's making a sauce right away? And Jack, I want you to start pouring the lemon juice in very gradually. And you stir. Stir, stir, stir. Just a minute. I know, you're going to do it left hand. And scrape up all the brown bits that are on the bottom because they're actually going to dissolve into the liquid. And you could turn your burner down now. Great. Okay, I think that that is maybe plenty. Yeah. Listen, oh. if I know that, and I'd like to think that I do. And I forgot my chicken stock with a knucklehead. I'll be right back. Just keep stirring. Talk to them, Jack. So, you don't need to tell me. You know I like to talk. I know you do. But, and I'm going to step in shock for a second simply because I have to grab some stuff out of this drawer. Well, for those of you that don't really know my old man, he loves his lemon. Back when we, back when I was younger, my mom, the, the traditional birthday dessert that mom would make, she wouldn't make him a birthday cake, she'd make him a lemon meringue pie. She doesn't do that anymore because of some reason or another. Presumably it has to do with the fact that pie. Um, but, but since then, she's been making these amazing lemon bars. And hey, maybe that could be what you do next. No. What, you're not going to have baking? And Janice Minerva wanted to know, uh, what if you don't have wine? Skip it. Start right with the lemon juice. And use the lemon juice to deglaze the pan. That's why I said it was optional. Now the thing about, the thing about deglazing the pan is you just need a little bit of liquid, a little bit of water-based right. liquid. In there. And Rachel wanted to know when do you drop the did you drop No, I did not drop my pasta yet. Did I do that? Nope. Okay, so when you're looking at this and you run your your whisk across the bottom, it should be starting to thicken up. And we're gonna this is when we're gonna add in our chicken stock. And stir, stir, stir as you add it. Now remember in the in the instructions. I told you that I like to make this with extra sauce because I like this sauce on the pasta itself. She likes her food how she likes her attitude, saucy as hell. And because this is kind of a loose sauce, you may not need to use all four cups, but I said three to four depending on how you want it. So now, we're going to bring this back up to a boil. And let it cook on down. And let down. it cook on down. Exactly, Jack. You got it. Okay. So, once your burner is hot again, and you start to see, and you start to see um, the bubbles starting to form, it's going to start coming to a boil, you're doing great. Let it just cook a little bit. Just let it sit there. Let it do its thing. Do you, like you want to pull out the Parmesan cheese for me? Certainly. Am I going to have to grate it? No. Nope. Oh, thank God. I did your it. And now it's time for a cocktail break. Uh, Bottom. 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 Here it is. Mm -hmm. Oh. Tap drawer? Yeah, I see it now. Okay. So now is about the time that we're going to drop our pasta. So your water should be boiling. It should be well salted. And a bunch of people are asking, is chicken broth okay? Rather yeah, than chicken stock? broth, chicken stock, they're interchangeable for this particular use. It's fine. And Nancy wants to see the sauce. 
So, my sauce is kind of a gorgeous um, brownish, uh, tan color, like a light, like a Werther's toffee, about that color. And I have um, little, Probably bits. No, yeah, no, it's little bits of uh, chicken that I don't want to get overcooked, so I'm just pulling them out. Okay. At the end of the day, the only difference between a uh, stock and a broth is how long you cook it for. Pretty much. A stock is going to be richer. A broth is going to be a little bit thinner. Interchangeable for this particular purpose. Stock could run for Congress. Uh, broth runs for municipal office. <laughs> okay, so if you're using string pasta, I don't care what your mom did or your grandmother did or your great aunt did. You do not break it. You pour it in all at once, and yes, it's going to stick out a little bit. That's fine. Take your tongs, move it around until it gets into the water. Now, I know on the package it tells you to cook eight ounces or eight quarts of Nancy water. wants to know if the zest goes in the sauce. Not yet. Because See, it's still sitting in front of Jack. It's still sitting in front of Jack because the zest is going to be the last thing we put into the sauce because we want it to maintain that fresh, bright, crisp taste. If you put it in now, it's gonna cook and get mellow. We want it to keep tasting super lemony. So we're gonna cook this down. Now, cook your pasta to your desired doneness. Like I said, I like mine a little hard still in the middle. And I want you to have your heat safe measuring cup ready to go because we're actually going to take some of this pasta water and add it to the sauce in our pan when the time comes so that we can thicken up the sauce a little bit. The starch from the pasta is going to help us thicken the sauce. And if your sauce doesn't thicken, that's where that other two tablespoons of flour is going to come And, worst case scenario, there's always cornstarch. Well, that's what the flour is going to do. You can, you can show that. It's fine. We'll keep it out now. I decided to use the toaster oven today rather than the big oven because it's 90 degrees and sunny and gorgeous here in Las Vegas. <laughs> uh, that's funny. It's beautiful. Here, have a beer and look at it. Beer, a juice box for adults. <laughs> a juice box for adults. So, um, <laughs> so you should constantly be uh, checking on your pasta stirring it, making sure that it's all below the water's edge. And your sauce should be looking beautiful right about now. Now, I know in some restaurants they don't like the color. They want it to stay really light. But I kind of like the golden brown color. And, you know, if you did this right, your chicken probably did not stick to your pan. And if it did, it lifted right up. Okay, because you heated it up first and you added your oil and then you put your meat in. As you've added the liquid, it, you know, and deglazed the pan and scraped everything up. When it comes time to wash this, there's not going to be any scrubbing. It's going to be boom, boom, boom. One, two, three, you're done. You know, all I'm thinking of now is that John Lee Hooker song. It's right. Boom, 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 boom. boom, 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 boom. boom, boom. Don't shoot you right down. Oh, I raised my son. Right! Well, you raised me on the Blues Brothers. That's how I know it. <laughs> In case you haven't noticed, or for those of you that don't know that much about us, good. Um, we are a bunch of cinephiles. We watch movies. We grew up watching movies together because a lot of the time, that's what we did. We, when it wasn't Jeopardy, it was film. Um, there was a period, there was a one-year period of my life where I wanted to watch nothing but The Lion King with dinner. Um, oh. If it was the remake, I would have slapped myself. But with but one of the films that was a standby for these two, especially when they were living over in Spain and they had like one cassette, <laughs> two, one film cassette, because this is back in the VHS days, for those youngins of you that are chimed in that don't know about, about what was before DVDs. 
they had a VHS that had the Blues Brothers on one side and what was on the other? No, no, it was all one side. Okay. It was the Blues Brothers and half of Fletch. So it got to the point where these two were able to recite the entirety of Blues Brothers in here. time with the film. And um, I could do the dance moves too. <laughs> Well, and and unfortunately, that is a trait that they passed on to me because now every time my girlfriend and I watch a Mel Brooks film, um, it is just as bad, especially when it's Blazing Saddles or Young Frankenstein. Oh, yeah. Uh, the, the original producers is up there, too. Oh, yeah. I like the producers. Okay, so you want to taste your sauce. Remember, I told you always taste. I've got my little tasting spoon. This one happens to be by Alessi, which is an Italian... Uh, Design house, they do beautiful stuff. It's fancy. Oh, it's what so it is. good. It's so good. Okay. Well, I mean, you so need it, so. Yeah. So now the thing about deglazing with the wine and scrape, scrape, scraping before you put the lemon juice in and letting this come up to a boil is you want to let the, everything cook down because if you don't, then all you're going to taste is wine. Now, when we did this, what do you taste? Just wine and lemon. A lot of chicken. Um, there's still some of the chicken flavor in there. There's a lot of the lemon, a lot of the wine. Perfect. Okay, we're gonna test our pasta. Still crunchy. So we're gonna wait. We're gonna add a little bit more chicken stock. So now, as your sauce cooks down, and there's the red dog sparkling. And of course, it all, all takes is just the one dog to set off all the others. You know, the uh, buggy freak dog that barks at shadows. Don't be sad. Oh, it was, there was actually somebody there. What? Yeah. That's, a, that's a phenomenon. Delivering the package? Yeah, that was a package. From Amazon, I'm sure. <laughs> so as your sauce cooks down and your flavors condense, you might want to add a little bit more to keep the texture that you want. And remember, this is all to feel. So if you want a super thick sauce, let it cook down, just keep stirring. There is, there is very little recipe in here, just feel it in your soul. <laughs> but if you want a really thick sauce, let it cook down and keep stirring so it doesn't stick to the bottom of the pan. I like my sauce just a little bit thinner, so we're going to keep adding stock as necessary. Babe, what is it? Me, okay. Must be a birthday present. You know, this past year. No, it's not. Well, it is. It's a tool. It's what? It's a tool. Really? They have the guy that designed Breitbart in there? You're not talking about me. Was it the tool that you needed to build the lawn furniture? Yes. Ah. Okay, so next week is going to be Mother's Day weekend. And Ow. Nancy and I are going to have to come up with something. Yeah, you maybe, are... maybe we'll let our mom weigh in and let her decide what we're making. Um, well, let's see what my mother says about that. Janice wants to know, what about the capers and parsley? Don't worry. We're getting there. We're getting We're there. We're getting there. Those go in at the very end. Because remember, the capers with the, are with the zest. With the zest. The, cap the capers are mainly there for scent. They they have that very fresh, very bright aroma, and that translates into their flavor. The more of it, the more you cook it, the more that goes away. Nice. Okay. So let's get our parsley because we're almost there. Um, if you haven't chopped yours yet, now is the time to do it. I'm gonna do this if you don't mind. Because I'm just going to jump right on in. And you know, remember what I said, if you've got um, nice fresh parsley and you've got tender stems and leaves, you can use them both. This is not my preferred tool, but my other ones are... They're chicken eyes. Chicken eyes. So I'm just going to... Here's a little tip. If your cutting board is sliding... Just put a towel underneath it, it'll help. 
So that way the cutting board and the towel can slide even. It works really well if you have a wet paper towel, actually. Um, when the pasta is done, do you drain it or rinse it? Drain it, do not rinse it. Because and if you're rinse getting it. ready uh, to drain ours, it's almost ready. If you she kind of wants to know if she wants a thicker sauce, can she start adding the flour? Not yet. So what I want you to do is take your heat safe cup, stick it in there, and pull out some of your pasta water, set it to the side, pasta. Do not rinse it. Because if you rinse it, you're going to rinse all your starch you're, off. You're off camera. I know. They should still be able to hear my big mouth though. Um, but if you rinse it, you're going to rinse off all the starch. It's going to help hold our sauce on. Jack, that looks great. Okay. So let's check our... Oh yeah, our sauce is looking good. Okay, so if you want your sauce to be a little bit thicker, add in your pasta water. Sorry, I'm just thinking back to the days when I worked at Seven Simple Stuff. They mm -hmm. wanted it so fine that it could be powdered. Well, this, yeah, we want it super fine. All right, so my sauce is thickening up beautifully. What we're going to do at this point is add back in our chicken pieces. Arise, chicken. Chicken, arise. And you can put them all in at the same time at this point because... They're already cooked for the most part. And this way, if you're, if, and this way, they are okay with being steamed. We've already kind yep. of sealed in the flavor. Are, that's right, Jack. Good job. Okay. And if you crowd the pan a little bit here, it's fine. So I'm going to tilt that so you can see it. Now remember, the flour that's on the chicken, that's remaining on the chicken, is going to thicken the sauce a little bit more. Kathy Davis wants to know what volume of sauce do you have now? Um, all together, I probably have two cups of sauce. But I'm probably going to add a little bit more chicken stock because I like a little bit more. Remember I told you I like a little sauce on my pasta. Oh, and the, the pasta. sauce and the flour that's on the chicken breast is going to thicken this up too. So what we're doing here is where putting all the components together, right? Turn the pan, yeah. Can you guys see that? Um, here, no, is that better? That, it was fine. Oh, I okay. just wanted the handle out of the way. And if you do this, you'll kind of swirl that sauce around to the top. Let's test our sauce. Saucy. Ah, saucy. Okay, so I'm gonna take my serving platter because it's almost ready. So by now, your pasta should be in the colander. Your chicken should be warming in the sauce. And then we're gonna get ready to plate everything. And like I told you in the instructions, I'll be plating family style. Karen Chalita wants to know what temp under the pan. Oh, uh, about medium. Yeah, because you're just warming up the chicken. Thank you for asking. Sorry about that. Medium, medium high. It depends on your stove, how quick it's going to come up to temp. I'm going to let you talk for a little while. Because I drank an awful lot of tea this morning, and I need to excuse myself. Well, Keep talking. <laughs> so, one of the, so the thing is that this is not one of those dishes that we had a lot when I was growing up. Generally... And earlier, when I said you made it, so of course it tastes good. 
Uh, that wasn't necessarily true. One of the dishes that mom used to make all the time, especially when we were living in Texas, was this black bean and rice casserole. Now, I'm expecting her to holler at me from the bathroom any second now, because we will not let her live this down. In her entire life, my mom has made maybe three duds that I can recall. This is at the top of the list, not because it was really terrible, but because it was one of those things that she made all the time. We had all the ingredients for it all the time, and one, of the, and one day, Dad and I just look at each other. We look at Mom and say, we don't like this. Why do you keep on making it? And she looks at us and she says, I kept on making it because I thought you guys liked it. I don't like it either. And we never had it again. So, oh, she's coming in angry. Come back. Yeah. All right, so it's time to play. So we're going to take our tongs, get our pasta on. Now, keep in mind, most of the time, is when someone's doing a cooking show and they have a relative home, they usually bring in their mother because it's like, oh yes, my mother was the one that taught me how to cook. Um, instead, she's bringing in somebody else that she taught how to cook and is, all, and is still telling embarrassing stories. So, Okay, so I'm plating family style. So I'm going to take my pasta and put it on one great big platter. Whoops. Let's leave this one aside. That's the one that I cut too thin, pounded too thin. Now I told you to divide your parsley. You could have put some into the sauce. I elected not to this time, it's fine. Um, can you pull me a plate so I can put this piece of chicken? Uh, certainly. Will this one do? Yeah. All right. Now we're gonna add in our capers. Just, just, just. Okay. That looks great. Okay. And then we're going to just scrape right in our lemon zest and our parsley. Save some for sprinkling on at the end, but I like to mix it right on into the sauce. And this sauce is still looking a little thick. So I'm going to add just a smidge more chicken stock. Now keep in mind that the pasta water that you set aside before is in case your sauce is still looking too thin. Right. Our sauce thickened up just fine, so we did not need to use it. Okay. Great. All right. And now, well, hang on. Let me do this so that you guys can see it, because this is kind of cool. We're just going to take this and pour it right over the top. And I have a cutting, I have a, a dish towel underneath because I'm a sloppy cook. And I did get some and, on the cutting. And the, why don't you slide the... I'm going to move this right out of the way. I'm Ooh, angling and zooming in on the dish. Should I angle? that to center. There you go. Look at that. So you've got your capers, you've got your parsley. Now you always want to do fresh herbs at the end because once they cook, they start to lose their flavor. So we've got all that on there. It's sinking down into the pasta. It's going to coat the pasta. Parmesan cheese. Remember, when it comes to Parmesan, there's no such thing as too much. <laughs> there is actually. No, there but is. we're going to be super gentle with this. Let's try our chicken since we have a piece left over. See how it tastes. Remember, kids, don't try this at home. Cutting cut chicken with a spoon is very frustrating. It tastes pretty good. It does not suck. Mm -hmm. And I lost some of my papers, so I got that. Hmm? All right, so we're just over an hour. What questions do you have? And I really hope that when you make this dish, that you actually, as some people have done in the past, either send me your photos, post them in the event, post them on Good For Spooning. If you need to revisit this video or any of the other videos, 
You can go to YouTube, Good For Spooning. You can follow me and all of my food on Instagram, at Good For Spooning. And you can follow me on Facebook as well. And if you have not subscribed to my blog, I don't know why, but please do so. Um, all of the uh, upcoming trip information is gonna be on there. We're right now working on a Viking river cruise from Budapest to Amsterdam for 2021. So we're gonna start talking about German food coming up pretty quickly um, and Austrian as well. So if you've got questions, now's the time because I'm really trying to keep this short. <laughs> How are we doing, babe? Um, we're doing well. I'm not seeing any questions in here. Any comments that um, we need to know? How many people uh, are still watching? Nancy says, will this hold for a bit and not get tough? It should. Because you pounded out those cutlets. Remember I said you broke up all of the muscle fibers, so you tenderized the meat by doing that. So it should stay pretty uh, tender throughout. Yeah. You probably won't even need a knife to cut this if you did it right. Seen a whole lot. Everybody's got good comments saying it looks good. So, plate up here. We're going to use bowls. You can use plates, it doesn't matter. Um, you could serve us. We're not going to do that today. Mm -hmm. Hey, babe, would you mind stirring the sauce for this pasta? Sure. And like I said, I have vegetarian sauce on the side for Lisa. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Uh, because she's not eating chicken, <laughs> but I did keep some pasta separate for her. Um, and remember, salt, salt, salt with pasta water, no oil. And, you know, I, I can't say it enough. Salt, salt, salt. Now, you remember when we started this, we built our flavor ladder, and it's a really simple ladder this time. It's our butter and our olive oil while forming the bottom, the bottom rung. Then we put our chicken with our flour and our salt. That's rung number two. When we took that out, we added in the ingredients for the sauce. We added our lemon juice, rung number three. Chicken stock, rung number four. Oh, I'm sorry, I skipped the wine. Wine was number three, lemon was number four, and chicken stock was number five. So you gotta do these things gradually and then cook them all down so they make a nice, great sauce. And that's how you get to the top of the ladder. A sauce. A sauce. All right, everybody, um, I hope you all enjoy my husband's birthday. I hope you all enjoy my husband's birthday dinner. And we will see you next week. And as soon as Nancy and I decide what we're gonna be making for our Mother's Day edition, and like I said, maybe my mom's gonna have some say in it, we will post it to Good For Spooning on Facebook. So thanks everybody. Jack, thanks for being here. Thank I appreciate you for having it. Me. And have a great Sunday. Saturday. But then I want you to have a good Sunday too. Sit